We're live and we're late. We are a tad bit late tonight. <laughs> so thank you for bearing with us and we apologize for the delay. It was just, it's just a Friday. What can you say to that? We're keeping people in suspense. Right. There you go. I like it. <laughs> so welcome back. It's Book Chats with Mostly Books. I'm Jody. I'm Jen. Tonight we are talking about The Damned by Renee Adier. This is book two. Yeah, we're reading another book two. We're continuing yes. with the series. So book one was The Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Book three is We Don't Know, but we are anxiously waiting for a title because I have thoughts. I'm going to go investigate Twitter some more because I did a little bit, but I didn't find anything. But I'm going to go back and She's look. keeping us in suspense uh, on that. <laughs> I know it just came out, though. So. Yeah, we're going to let it pass. <laughs> so Jen's going to give us a synopsis. Yeah. Um, also, spoilers for book one. Um, we're just going to start, yes, hopefully. start there. Um, so we pick up right where book where the beautiful ends. Bastien is just waking up as a vampire. He doesn't handle it well. Um, Celine has her own dress shop, and she has a mysterious patron in Odette. She's like, I, why do I know you? I don't know. <laughs> she has gaps in her memory, and they are stressing her out, and she can't remember parts of herself. But she gets these weird flashes every so often, so something's going on. Um, Michael is there by her side. We're going to talk about Michael. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what else have I got going on? Bastian's sister is plotting. There's a lot happening. <laughs> it goes a lot of places, so I don't want to spoil it, but, like, it's about Celine getting her memories back, figuring out her, some of her past that comes to haunt her. And ba- Bastian coming to terms with being a vampire. Yeah, Bastian getting over a little bit of a self-hatred, but... He's 18 and a vampire. That doesn't go very well. Right. (laughs) Uh, Well, first off, did you like it? I did like it. Yeah? I read it in like seven hours or something. I liked it too. I totally get that. And I liked the cover of the book. It's Mm -hmm. purple. I don't know why that was nice. It's very nice lavender. Yep. It's a nice change from all the browns and whites and blacks. (laughs) I will take a nice black hardbound. They look slick on a shelf. They can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have... One that we will talk about later that's this, like, ugly brown color. It's fine. (laughs) But it's, like, not the prettiest brown they could have chosen. (laughs) Your problem isn't that it's brown. It's that they picked a bad shade. It's a bad shade of brown, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, we're moving past that. (laughs) Nice save. Yeah, it's fine. Um, It's my book. (laughs) Where to begin with this one? Do you want to start with characters, writing? Um, We could do that. Was the writing, like, you really like the lush... Writing the description from the first one. Did you like this one? I did. I didn't feel like we got quite the same sense of New Orleans because so many things happen and we do other things, but I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. We didn't get those little interludes of suspense like we had in book one um, that kept kind of like pushing you along like, who is this person talking? Yeah. Um, Again, I was okay with that. (laughs) We get a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different in writing in that sense it was just a different style like not Mm -hmm. style different formatting her style is still the same um but i was okay with all of that because many things happened and things were revealed that i needed to know about yeah so overall liked the writing i mean her writing's always great (laughs) (laughs) and like the first one it's mostly celine's point of view Mm -hmm. we get and we get like the interludes of like someone else some other unnamed person. person Yeah, but then this one we get, like, a whole ensemble cast. We get Bastien, we get Celine, I think we get Michael mm-hmm. for a bit, we get Odette, Jay, Arjun. I we mean, get, we get a lot of we different... We get a lot of them. I really also appreciated how much of Bastien we had. Yeah. I, I felt we like needed we that. needed that. Mm-hmm. I think we needed to work through his transformation as much as he <laughs> needed to. <laughs> work through is a good way to put it. <laughs> Um, so I also enjoyed that we got everyone's perspective, and it was very interesting to see yeah. some insights from other characters. And, like, Bastion's chapters are written in first person, <laughs> and then everyone else is in third person, which, like, I noticed it at some point, like, fairly early on in the mm. book, but I didn't devote the brain cells to figuring out, like, what was different. I was just like, there's something here. Oh, well. <laughs> Keep going. And then around, like, 300, I was like oh, I, like, paid attention to, like, one of the chapter headings. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's what this is. Yeah, I should have paid attention sooner, but I was, like, kind of otherwise distracted. Yeah, no, that's (laughs) totally fine. Honestly, I don't know that I noticed it at all until you mentioned it. (laughs) 
it doesn't happen very often. I don't think I've seen it in other books. Mm-hmm. Definitely not in another YA book. Yeah, I, it didn't bother me one way or the other. I wonder if she wanted us to feel more connected with him during that. I don't Maybe. know. I don't know. Or I don't. I don't know what the reason. It worked for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it worked. It was fine, and like I didn't have a problem with it. It was just kind of surprising because mm-hmm. you don't usually see it yeah. combined in one book. Yeah, it was different. Yeah, in a good way. It wasn't in a good way. <laughs> Characters? We can do characters. Broadly. Yeah. <laughs> as broadly as we can. Celine. I still adore her. Yeah. You me know, too. she refuses to be a damsel in distress, and I love that. She very much in this book was like, nope, saving myself. I don't need you all to tell me what to do. She's like, you're all lying to me. Yep, I need to rely on myself even more so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you? Yeah, I still really like her. Mm-hmm. She's a, she's very good. Um feel like the other characters like I want to protect her but I'm like that's not it's she doesn't need that and it's not working it's just it's, making yeah. it so much worse <laughs> yeah um Bastion I like him he's good this book Me is too. like very careful to avoid a lot of the like vampire tropes because mm-hmm. then it gets some like iffy things with like consent mm-hmm. and like usually your vampire is like a thousand years older than your teenage girl but that's not it, the case in this one and like Bastion he's drinking his respecting women juice it's good for him mm-hmm. yeah and he also was going after really evil men <laughs> and I appreciated that yeah <laughs> yeah he's adorable I love him as well you can, um, you can see with his relationship with Celine compared to well we can say Michael because we don't like Michael but how <laughs> like how much he respects her and there's yeah. that one moment of like where one of his adopted siblings is like, you have to tell her. Mm-hmm. You can't t- make this, don't make her story about you. And I was like, that's such a good line. I thought that was an excellent line as well. Oh, that was a good line. Yeah. Um. Shoot, I had another thought about that with them. Hmm. Is it about Michael? No, it was the way Bastion and Celine's relationship. I just, he so thinks of her as an equal. That was what mm-hmm. it was. He doesn't like pander down to her like Michael tends to do. Yeah, I don't like Michael that. really wants her to need Tim and to need to be saved, and that's yeah. just not her. And we don't really need that. <laughs> well, she also spends, like, the whole book being like, oh, I should like him. It's like, girl, you don't. No, if you have to say that, that is not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. That's a move on. It's so boring. <laughs> um, I yeah. It boring. And I love all of the other vampires. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, is it ethereal ethereal mm-hmm. beings that we have. what are the ethereal beings do we want to go into that i feel like should, we should but maybe not yet not give yet it, I give agree. it a couple more minutes um so yeah i i liked having jays and arjun's is that I, arjun? arjun arjun um stories mm-hmm. backstories i was really excited to get some of those i really feel for jay oh my gosh that that boy oh man has endured a lot yeah. <laughs> Uh, Madeline and Hortense, is that, is that okay, okay, are interesting. They're kind of, they're very different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to describe them. I think they're, I feel like that we, they're a bit more on the periphery. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we, since we spend more time in Bastion's head, we see more of his siblings, but then Jay and Arjun have things going on. But, like, Boone, Hortense, and Madeline are kind of on the I love side. Boone. <laughs> he's there's nothing to dislike about uh, he's this. just the lovable big old goof <laughs> yeah. um they're a bit more periphery i think um we there's a third book still so we might see more of them but, there and it was interesting because we learned that you know madeline was one of the first of the children she was the first yeah who was the second was it jay or odette i don't know they tell us at one point yeah I just don't and then you know she convinces him to um to change her sister, who mm-hmm. seems very, she enjoys being an immortal. She re- that was yeah. That's <laughs> she a, really that's enjoys really it. the best way of putting. It. I'm like, how do I say that? <laughs> but she does. She's a little darker, but like not creepy. It's she's just a little. Yeah. She just enjoys the darker side. <laughs> yeah, she's like almost. All- she's not unhinged but like there's a part where she's like blood running down her face and she's just laughing and i'm like okay you're a little wild she's a little a little wild is a good way to put that too yeah they (laughs) they describe her as hedonistic yeah that's the word they give her in the book yeah so she was different i i still enjoyed them all Mm 
Uh, I still, like you said, don't like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, love Pippa. Really? Have hope for her. She's on thin ice with me. Really? What well, yeah. of all the lying? Well, that, and I think she's up to something else. Oh. At the end. But like, I think, okay, we'll, we'll come back to what I, yeah. I'm thinking on that part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay, anyway. <laughs> Are we forgetting anyone amazing? Emily. Oh, Emily. Oh my gosh, the sister. Ugh, what did you think of her? I kind of like how she doesn't give a crap about her brother. <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, you don't deserve anything. Like, time to, time to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did da- die saving it. Well, almost die saving it. Yeah. Uh, it's not a happy sibling relationship. Um, so I think it's interesting. I don't particularly like her, but yeah. So I found her super annoying but, <laughs> and flat, but I think that we'll get that flushed out in book three mm-hmm. more. But right now she's just so anchor driven that I'm like, okay, come on, girl. There's got to be a little bit yeah. more to you. Um, and I also want to know... What really turned... I mean, we kind of hear why she went from being the loving big sister to I will run into a fire and save my brother to I despise him. He's so entitled. (laughs) Yeah. So I need a little bit of fillers. And I'm hoping we get that in book three. I I think it would make sense because we went like the whole first book not even knowing her name. Yeah. And this one we just get little bits of her. Yeah. Uh, I will say uh, if she totally goes bad cool villain i could get on board with that but she needs a little bit more (laughs) of something one way or the other (laughs) yeah okay i think we'll get it i hope so are we ready to ruin this for everyone (laughs) (laughs) yeah all right so spoilers from here much more spoilers turn off come back after you've read the book yeah we thought (laughs) okay i think that's good what do you think what do what do you want to spoil first oh let's do the um the eth- eth- hmm. ethereal thank you ethereal oh yeah the big place we go in this book okay well maybe we should first by start by saying we didn't even hear from Celine until page 99 because of oh, her really? memory issues it took almost 100 pages for us to actually get a Celine chapter I didn't count. guess I was tracking <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it like I was like it's where is she and then I'm like oh we'll get her right and yeah. then at 140 we get the big reveal of who her mom is yeah. Which was amazing. Who is her mother? Her mother is the, like, high royalty fae queen of the <laughs> Sylvan Vale. Of course she is, yeah, right? whatever those words mean, right? <laughs> um, so there's, what, you want to explain the two worlds? I can try. So it was, like, this other world, this, like, parallel dimension where, like, fairies and your typical fantasy creatures live. And then they split into the Sylvan Vale, which is basically your summertime fae world. Um, and then the Sylvan Wil- do you say wild or wild? I said wild. Wild? Okay. It's Sylvan Wild. So that's like your nighttime spooky ice castles where like your creatures of the night live, like your vampires mm-hmm. and uh, werewolves. And then there's another fracturing. So the vampires start like bartering their immortality with humans. Um, or that was like what broke the broke the camel's back. There you go. Um, they were bartering other things before that. So, the rest of the creatures in the Sylvan Wild, like the goblins, gnomes, trolls, trolls whatever What else. have you. Yeah, take your pick. Um, they kick the vampires and the werewolves out, because the werewolves are kind of siding with the vampires. And so that's how you get the fallen and the brotherhood. Mm-hmm. So the vampires are the fallen, and the werewolves are the brotherhood in modern day New Orleans. So. Modern day in 1800s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all relative. Time, right. time is not real. If 2020's proven anything, time is not real. Um, so, Celine's mother is the lady of the veil, so she's the queen of the fae, basically. Um, and they meet her. And the vampires at one time ruled the Sylvan Wild, right? I th- think so and like the fae and the va- the fae and the vampires were particularly mortal enemies or immortal and enemies were battling it out and the werewolves were their their as they call them like, like their a, guard dogs yeah which was really to me derogatory i was not a fan of that terming well the vampires don't like the werewolves anyway so i was but like i was still like mm, they're still helping you guys out yeah i'm like i get it but it's not surprising yeah 
Um, um, and then it's it fractured even more yeah. after all that. Yeah. And there's like the smear campaign the vampires run against the Fae or the Fae against the vampires. The vampires. Because it's they were the ones that were blowing up the whole bartering and all. Yeah. They made a, that a big scandal. It was a whole thing. Yeah. I feel like we're going to get a lot more on that. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Celine is half Fae. <laughs> yeah. And then and her mother's like, go live in the human world with your dad. I think there is more to that statement mm-hmm. because I feel like, why did you really let her live there for 18, almost 18 years and now you're itching to bring her home? Well, in the first book it has, hmm. like, Celine's like, one memory of her mother is her mother, like, telling her, like, go, go, run quickly, like, fleeing something. Mm. So I'm like, what There's the such fuck? a backstory there. There's something there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was, like, a huge revelation it may i mean it makes sense because you knew there was a reason Celine was pulled into this world mm-hmm. of vampires and whatnot and you knew there was a reason why the memories were coming back to her even mm-hmm. though the like highest vampire ever deleted them yeah um deleted them. however you <laughs> just care. move them to the, to the recycle <laughs> <Delete>. bin <laughs> yeah this is totally what i envisioned yes <laughs> um so it was it was really cool in that sense and then we find out that's one of our you know Vamp- he's not a vampire, but one of our favorite characters. Well, not favorite characters, but one of the characters of the we vampires. Like Brute. I don't even know what the pack. Coven. Coven. Is also half fae. And yeah. then we also found out one maybe was working with the fae. Yeah. And the... I didn't think that. Okay. Before we go into <laughs> Jay's story, <laughs> is there anything else we should cover here about um, this... Celine and her mom? Oh. Um, I don't trust her mother. It kind of reminded me in Kingdom of Copper when Nahri met Manaze right. after so long. And Nahri was a bit more, like, skeptical of her mother. And, like, Celine wasn't. And I'm like, okay, I get why you're not. But I feel like Celine sort of is. She's, I think she's playing her mom as much I as her mom. she is now. Yeah. Because she was smart enough, I think, to initially go, oh, I shouldn't stay here. I need mm-hmm. to go with them. So I was really proud of that moment because I'm... Not sure I would have had the guts to be like, nope, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, sorry, no. <laughs> I realize you're royalty, <laughs> but no. Um, but yeah, I'm totally with you. Her mom is up to something, and it's going to be really devious, I think. Well, it's like Faye and their politics and whatever. That's, their promises that's that their, they work the, around. Their thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's so much building for the next book between that and the werewolves and the I mean there's so many like separate battles going on do you think Celine has magic powers or other suppressed memories like oh, her yeah. mother like re- suppressed some of her memories because like Arjun has abilities and he's half fae Celine doesn't I as think, far as we know I think she's going to have abilities yes now that she's 18 okay oh, well, yeah. well we'll be 18 in the next book she's not quite there yet yeah hence why she had to come I thought she turned 18 because, like, her memories all came flooding back. Or was that just because she was in the veil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, because the whole point was they're like, she's going to be 18 in a month, but we need her sooner to come across. But she has to come on her own free will because we promised the dad. We wouldn't bring her We here. wouldn't bring her. who's her dad? Who? Who's her dad? Yeah. He's the, the Frenchman. Yeah, but is he important otherwise? We don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, she doesn't think so right now. She thinks he just is like some merchant i think okay i remember right oh wasn't he a book maybe person and we need to come back to her past we do we because it comes back yeah okay so we we learned about her fey background oh let's talk about jay that was Mm -hmm. where we were headed next do you want to tell a little bit about his backstory yeah so we get him um well honestly i didn't remember jay existed from book one Poor Jay. Because I was like, I would have remembered if there was a name, uh, if Jay had been a name. But I think we just get him as a, like in the background. Mm-hmm. He's the resident assassin for Nicodemus and Bastian's coven. Um, he is Korean, so he's Jay Hook or Shin Jay Hook, and they all call him Jay Hooka. So it has like a cute diminutive on it, which I thought was adorable that his siblings are kind of teasing him. Yeah. Um, but he's their resident assassin. He and Arjun share a flat or. A there's a French word for it. Um, and he's working for the Lady of the Veil because oh, it's a whole thing. It's a thing. Nicod- he was young. Yeah, Nicodemus sent him to go find some warlock. That went badly. Jay got tortured. Yes, 
sorry before you go into all that before that when he was young he had heard of the fae and was then like riding that horse once oh, yeah. a year in to visit her so there's like they have a long backstory before i forgot about that yeah before he has to go hunt down okay keep going now yeah because he was taught to fight by the fae so he like grew up wanting to be one of them and could never go mm-hmm. so then mm-hmm. then he became he, then he becomes a vampire and Nicodemus sends him to go kill this warlock. That goes badly. Jay gets tortured. Jay wants revenge. Yeah. The Lady of the Veil vale makes him a deal. Like, I'll tell you where this warlock is, but you owe me a favor or a promise or whatever. Um, and he's like, yeah, of course I'm going to do that. Duh. Um, and then the whole promise comes back that he's supposed to, like, keep tabs on Celine. Yeah, I didn't think it was quite as big of a betrayal. Like I, as they all thought, they were they're all still fresh from like Nigel's betrayal. Though, I think so that's they're gonna, it. They're, mm-hmm. they're I think they're working edge. their Nigel issues out on poor Jay, <laughs> and that broke my heart because it's not the same. <laughs> it's really not the same. Um, yeah. So that's what happens, and Jay gets caught, and almost killed. Let's not forget that Jay and Madeline have a history. I didn't even know where to put that in because there's just so much. Other there's stuff. so much to Jay that we didn't know about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that whole thing was interesting because then I was like, is Madeline and um, Nicodemus, are they a pair? Or was he just yeah. like, it's all about me and my loyalty. You can have no other love interests. There was a re like... Uh, there was a reason. I don't yeah, that he made was. Jay choose, basically. Yeah. Anyway, well, lo- loyalty and love was quite a theme in this thing. Yeah, and all there's, there's a whole thing of, like, they owe loyalty to their maker, mm-hmm. and he can kind of, like, speak in their heads, and I wonder if he can, like, otherwise compel them. I also wondered that. Because there's, like, I don't know. There's a whole thing of, like, Bastian being like, oh, my siblings always do exactly what he says. And I was like, there's, it feels like there's something I, else going on here. Well, and I also wondered if that was to build us up to finding out Jay's not doing mm-hmm. necessarily That's exactly true. what they're told and he's not the little soldier that bastian kept saying he was yeah yeah i don't know i there could definitely be some compelling going on yeah i just like that at the end at, at the end of it all like after mm-hmm. all of it bastian's like he's still my brother it's like, yes I, I felt like everybody felt that way yeah. too at the end and they really fought to keep him alive which worked out mm-hmm. <laughs> which was good it was good um yeah okay do we just want to dive to the end I think so. There's some, like, deaths asterisk that we need to talk about. Do we want to talk about that before the end? Or well, that's after at the, the end. Okay, I'm like, I feel like that's the end. Yeah, but... I'm like, it's okay. right there. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, before we get there, let's just say we travel to the Fey world. It gets oh, really yeah, we crazy. We Fae. go to both the summer and the winter side. We're not done with that. Yeah, definitely not, because she's headed back there, Celine. Well, I don't think Bastion's done with it either, because Bastion oh, no. wants to go because he hates being a vampire, and he hears about this warlock. An unmaker. And who can unmake his immortality, which I don't think the warlock can actually make it, unmake his immortality. Either. But he's like, I gotta go find this dude. He's in the Sylvan Wild. But you can't get there. But you can't get there <laughs> unless you do jump through these hoops. Long story short, he gets there. He goes to the goblin court king troll gnome thing. And he's like, oh, that dude doesn't exist anymore. And then we find out he does, but they leave. But he's like this weird servant goblin? Yeah, I don't know what like, that's hey, all that's about. you. And he's yeah. like, eh. Yeah, that was interesting. Anyway, <laughs> to the end. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, Emily gets a little conniving. And a little. <laughs> <laughs> she has a lot of pawns right now. She so... has plans. Oh, and I'm not sure where that's headed. Anyway. <laughs> no, we're good. She brings everyone. Is it? Are they at the docks? They're on a boat. They're on a boat, right? So they are sort of. Okay, so she has Nicodemus. She's got all of her werewolf brotherhoods from all across the nation, all the south at least. It felt really weird hearing like other states, are because I like kind of forgot. I thought that part was a little weird too, because I was like, I guess that makes sense. There was in like Tennessee, Missouri. I was like a brotherhood in Tennessee. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> and now we are bringing the vampires to come save Nick Davis. Yeah, because Emily sends Bastian like a, a note a of note. like, if you want to see your uncle again, oh, meet me here. In the burned ashes. Oh, yeah, our, she burned their house down. Our favorite place. Yeah. <sighs> but everyone made it out alive, including Every- the snake. I love Toussaint. Good. I love Toussaint. Yeah. So needless to say, okay, so we're here, and we all think Nicodemus is going to get brought up and put into the sun by Emily, but then he just struts up there. And willingly 
takes his fetish off so he can burn in the sun. But why? That is oh, so, there's something going on. so uncharacteristic of him. There is something going on. Oh, you, I wonder what she used to convince him. I wonder if it's... I, ha- I thought about this. Because, one, there's a whole agreement between the Fallen and the Brotherhood that the Fallen can't bring another vampire. Right! In, and Bastion becomes a vampire. So that kind of breaks the laws. So you... Th- Bastion does also, also doesn't seem aware of that law. <laughs> they, no, no, no one seemed to care. Yeah. Yeah, I did so, Do you think it was kind of like, if he's going to stay, a vampire has to go? And Nicodemus has to... Um, I think it's going to work out that way. It's going to like mean that Bastion has less death threats against him in book three that we have to deal with. But I don't think that's why he did it. Cause I don't why think, do you think he did it? I think Nicodemus is testing Bastion. He's saying, he's like, he really wants him to take back the Horned Throne. That's a whole other thing. And I think he's going to say, like, it's implied like nephew avenge me because Bastien did care about his uncle and it was only kind of starting to realize how terrible he was <laughs> took him a while um so i think it's like one final test like what's going to compel my nephew this to is going to push him and yeah. and he thinks that Bastien is going to be like the strongest ever vamp- he is unnaturally strong yeah yeah it makes you makes you wonder about that too and don't yeah. forget celine is being pushed towards that horned throne too as well from the face side yeah the horn thrones left over from when the sylvan veil and the sylvan wild weren't split were one yeah so anywho i think it's just the last the last thing he could do mm-hmm. the thing to get bastian to do what he wanted that totally could be because there has to have been something up emily's sleeve to have gotten him convinced otherwise yeah and i don't know what that would have been yeah emily so, might have made him a deal like look listen that like, was my if thought you die then like we won't kill him but she's gonna kill try and kill her brother anyway yeah um sure so yeah <laughs> yeah so needless to say uh a riot breaks out <laughs> after his, his his death and the vampires and the werewolves go at it and we have one really traumatic incident uh, with our lovely odette that everyone loves i personally don't think she's gone i don't think she's dead either now did Emily do it, right? Emily took the, yeah, the Emily knife. Yeah, Emily stabbed her. Through the neck, the silver knife. Because yes. Odette was going to try and help Luca, who also gets shot on accident. By Michael. Yeah, but we all cousin. saw that coming. Um, right. Because Michael was trying to shoot someone. but uh, Michael was trying to shoot Emily. Oh, yeah. He yeah was got really upset, and he sent a warning fire at her. He hit her, but she was like, well, I don't care. I'm going to still attack everybody else. And then... He aims to, like, truly kill her, and His, Luca jumps in front. Because Luca and Emily are married, and Luca cares much more for Emily than Emily seems to care for him. I don't think she cares for him more than, like, hey, you're my maker. She's like, you're useful. Yeah, I'll use you to get what I want, but he's, like, madly in love with her. Yeah. Yeah, that was sad, too. So, and I, I kind of feel for Michael in that moment, because yeah. I don't think he wanted to be a part of the werewolf world, and now he has to be since he killed a werewolf in the family now he will have to become a yeah. werewolf to replace that member that's a whole thing too that's a whole thing and yeah it is chaos at the end i don't think emily is dead or not emily um, oh dead oh dead i don't think oh dead's dead i don't either i think madeline will find a way to save her yeah. oh no it wasn't madeline who's gonna Ifan. do it it's Ifan, yeah yeah but there was a whole thing of like she's already dead it's too late and i'm like mm, we don't see a body and the last scene is like bastion and celine like pacing outside the hotel not wanting to go up and see but also i don't want to believe one of our queer characters just gets murdered <laughs> and i love her dearly i love her i know she's fabulous okay so you think that's enough for the end yeah but no, no no there's something else <laughs> <laughs> what's the last piece go ahead oh you want me to tell mm-hmm. um okay so celine fled paris um mm-hmm. that's how book one starts she fled paris uh because she murdered her the the boy who tried to assault Self-defense. her defense yeah, completely. Completely. She was completely right, too. Um, and she's like, okay, cool. I'm a murderess now. I'm going to go to gonna America. Flee. <laughs> um, that's all well and done. Until we get two little interludes of this guy with a handlebar mustache kind of, like, stalking her. Lurking along the side. Yeah. The first one, I'm like, okay, cool. That's This is nothing new from book one. Um, <laughs> and then at the end, we get another one. And I'm like, this is weird. And then we get... Her and Bastien are like, like you said, like pacing outside the hotel or something. And this guy sh- comes up, is like, Celine, Marceline Rousseau. Yeah. Full name. Full, he full named her. Mm-hmm. Um, 
something something you're wanted for an investigation of mm. murder or something and she and bastian almost kills the dude good yeah. for him um and then Celine's like no no you can't do that and he listens to her he did which yeah is good. no that, that was really good because she's like nope i just need to disappear for a while gosh where's she gonna disappear to I don't know, a parallel dimension where time doesn't work properly. Right? I was like, well, that's convenient. You already have to go back. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting because you kind of wonder, I feel like that is more than just what we assume it is. I feel there's probably something supernatural on that side as well. Don't you? Probably. Or something with her dad. Wait, right. Or something with Pippa. Oh, Gosh. really? I... <gasps> okay. Did you get any vibes from Pippa and Arjun? Oh, Yeah. I'm so yeah. hoping. I'm. That's why I hope. He calls her pet. I know, and she's so annoyed with him, but it's like all tongue tied. She tries too hard. <laughs> she's yeah. Anyway, that's why I was like, I have hope for Pippa. I yeah. think she's gonna find her true love and not really marry that other guy, Phoebus. Yeah, it's a terrible name, by the way. <laughs> it's Apollo's name. It's. Um, but just like Pippa's, la- like when she says like Arjun will be her next mark. I'm like, what does that mean? I snickered because I was like, oh, Pippa, you don't get Mark at all. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think Pippa has something else going on. Because mm. she was like also, kind, then she also like rat. No, she didn't rat Selene out to the um, su- mother superior. Yeah, no. no. I no think, she's mm. always been a really good friend, except for the whole, I'm not telling you what really happened. Lies that everybody was doing. Yeah. So can you really fault just her for that? Uh, otherwise, she's been a pretty good friend. So I felt like the Mark comment was like her thinking she was going to be able to like manipulate him. And but Pippa's also one of like she knew about Celine's past. Mm, she she did, but she never judged her for it. Yeah, but just like that, he shows up now. I don't think it's Pippa. I, I hope know. it's not Pippa. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if it's Pippa or not. Um, shoot, there was something else I was going to say. Because who was she? She was talking to somebody else and they wouldn't. Before Arjun. That wouldn't tell her. Who did, Bast- did she go talk to Bastian? Maybe. And maybe they because the building was burnt down. I guess that's why I thought she said Mark. Because like, my first one didn't lead me where I wanted I don't know who her first mark is then. Like, is her first mark Phoebus? No. I felt like it was whoever was who was trying to get the information. It was Michael. She watched Michael turn into a werewolf. That oh, was her yeah, first she did. mark. And she's like, oh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go over here and ask this dude now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. At least that's how I read the mark comment. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, no, oh, I don't know. I totally she's forgot to that she saw that, though, and she wasn't yeah. as weirded out as one should be. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something going on here. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait for the next book. <laughs> <laughs> so, any parting thoughts on this? I need the next book. Me too. I know this one just leaves you so wanting. It, flows, it just goes so smoothly, like, from when you start it to, like, you can just read it all the way through, mm-hmm. and it just it just it just goes yeah i thought i actually thought that as well and i i know we went to weird places that you weren't necessarily expecting this book to go after reading book one but Mm -hmm. i never felt like it wasn't related it all made sense well because i just wasn't expecting it like kind of at the end of the end of book one we're like okay what's going on there's something much bigger going on here Mm -hmm. and now and we were right yeah (laughs) i said you you knew there was a bigger supernatural world out there we just didn't get the scope of that Mm -hmm. until this one yeah i agree yeah. So what are we reading next week? Next week we are reading Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I didn't pull one down. It's way, way up there. I can pull one down. <laughs> um, so it looks like that. It's lovely. It's um, lovely. It's Yale and secret societies and dark academia and um, all sorts don't of read goodness. for the faint at heart. You've read this one. I did read this one. I'm so excited for you to read this. This is going to make me happy. Um, hopefully, this you... is why we picked it because I wanted to read it. Yeah, uh huh. And I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you enjoy it. I mean, I hope I like her though, so I think I will. Yeah, I think. Okay, it's obviously nothing like the Grishaverse. Mm-hmm. Don't go in ever thinking that this is very much an urban fantasy tale. It's still very dark, like the Grishaverse, but it's a very realistic dark. Um, so there will be some 
violence that is very realistic. Yeah. Um, so be prepared for all those things. But oh my gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> it's like one of my friends went to Yale. Mm. Um, so when I found that this one was about Yale, I think I texted her. I'm like, it's about Yale. I think there's a map. Is there, is there a map? map? I'm, and maybe I'm making it up because maybe I just wanted a map. Nope, I just wanted a map. I wanted a map of all the houses. Oh. Never mind. No, there's a map. Is there? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I'm like, maybe I made it up, but I really have a visual of that. So I, I of course, love maps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a map. That's cool. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what you think of everyone. They're definitely um, some flawed characters. We'll go with that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess come back next week and find out what we think. If yeah. you want to read it before we spoil it. That's totally understandable. Uh, you can call us here at Mostly Books, and we'll get you a copy. Or you can also order it on our website. Or you can do Libra FM if you would like to listen to it. Yep. We're good. I think we're good. Yeah. All right. See everyone next week. Bye. Bye.